1883, a Birmingham toolmaker called Joseph Hudson accidentally dropped his violin. He realised the unusual noise could be put to a good purpose. He adopted the sound for a whistle he was making for the Metropolitan Police, and the note proved so distinctive <coughs> that it was soon taken up by police forces all over Britain. Sherlock Holmes solved his first case, a study in Scarlet, in 1887 with a combination of guile, science and pure reason. Eliminate the other factors and the one that remains must be the truth. He was the archetypal Victorian detective, armed, of course, with a, a magnifying glass, the deer stalker, and accompanied by his faithful Dr. Watson. Drive on! Yep. 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 The Victorians were fascinated by crime and Sherlock Holmes fed an insatiable appetite for the excitement of the criminal underworld. Across Britain, huge numbers of people had migrated to towns and cities. This crowding together of strangers led to feelings of distrust and insecurity. And just as today, public fears were stoked with sensational reports of the most lurid crimes. The Victorians began to feel that they were being swamped by a crime wave. There seemed to be an increase in lawlessness in towns and cities right across the country. Crime was becoming a political issue and action was needed. In 1829, Sir Robert Peel introduced bobbies or peelers to London. And in 1839, the Birmingham force appeared. But it wasn't until 1856 that the government decided that every town in the country should have its own police force. For the police to be effective, they had to be recognisable by the public. So they wore a distinctive uniform. The early uniform started off with a top hat like that. Great. I like that. That's for the air of authority. Right. You're the boss, you're telling the people what to do. OK. Don't park that wagon there. But the jacket is a tail jacket. Now, the idea was that people in authority would wear the top hat, so they were giving the orders. But the tail jacket is like a servant's jacket for servitude. The public were paying us our wages, but we were telling them what to do. So they are the masters and we are the servants. Quite a tricky relationship. It's a very unusual relationship. Mm. Now, it's a nice jacket, but it doesn't seem to have any pockets. No need for pockets at all. We didn't start having pocketbooks till the 1890s. But what about evidence? You, you, the prisoners were dealt with the next day. There was none of this giving them bail and going on remand. They'd do a runner and go to another town. Right. Statement taking didn't come in really till the late 1880s. Gosh. And then what's on us this? Now, this is your cutlass. That's you a wear that at all it? times. Oh, that's a vicious weapon, isn't it? I wouldn't like to be on the receiving end of that. Policemen had to be trained in cutlass drill right. before they were allowed out on the streets. The police could stop crime as it happened, but only if they were in the right place at the right time. All too often they weren't. For some notorious criminals, it was all too easy to escape the long arm of the law.